<clears throat> Welcome to Tough Crowd. Oh, excuse me. The show formerly known as Tough Crowd. We're calling it by its new name. Colin Quinn, trying his hardest to be a gentleman, while his buddy Nick DiPaolo dares to question him on his topics, who he'd really like to throw a nice right hand right in his Italian face right now. <laughs> And his stupid friend Jim Norton, Keith, all those, Patrice, all the only one that's well behaved is Giraldo. It's always been that way. Because he went to Catholic high school, really. But uh, we're not here to talk about that, folks. We're here to talk about a lot of stuff. We're going to talk about the priest thing, the Catholic high school. You know, they, they're going to this thing about Catholic schools, drug testing in Catholic schools. And I'm not going to make a stupid, played out priest joke. Ha ha ha. Because priests didn't give you drugs, they get you drinks. And then you get. <laughs> Unless you count roofies as drugs. But you know, I don't, in those days, they didn't even call them that. But uh, how about Bush has to go to the Supreme Court just to cross the border to get criminals? Okay? It's outrageous, folks. I say the Middle East, let them handle their job. They have a good justice system over there, if you look at it. The, uh, it's worked that well since the Old Testament. They haven't changed a, a law. Um, <laughs> you know, because first of all, you know, what do they do? They'll arrest. We, over here, we have a jury of our peers, but it's moral relativity. Over there, they have a system of trial by jury, where if you get raped, you go on trial. And then uh, 12 village elders throw 100 miles an hour fastballs at your burka uh, in a sandstorm. <laughs> so they got that going for them. They don't have a jury box, they got a bullpen. And I'll tell you something else, folks. I was in court there once, I'm not kidding. Instead of the Lady of Justice, there was a, a statue of Cy Young. Now you think I made that up, don't you? <laughs> All right, I did, folks. Damn it, we're starting the show, I don't care what kind of anticlimactic. to count my chickens before they hash, but I think these shows are hit already. <laughs> if we were to find Osama bin Laden today, the U.S. could not bring him to America to face charges for the September 11th attacks. Bush is trying to change this. Mo, what do you think? Well, I, I agree with Bush, because I just don't think that the carrot and stick approach works with somebody like Osama bin Laden. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think you can sort of, you know, offer him an incentive package to, you know, to, to be extradited. Um, I, I, the only other option, I think, is... <laughs> no, yeah, I think the only other option is tomfoolery. But, I mean, the idea of our agents sort of playing Red Rover, Red Rover with Osama bin Laden is completely humiliating just to catch him. <laughs> but, I don't know. That tomfoolery, we're going to have to cut that out. You know, kids watch this show, oh, too. No, okay, sorry. All right, what do you... I, 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 didn't, I, didn't under, I didn't understand anything you said, but sure. I think... No, that's okay. But I, you got to watch it on the Daily Show. It's, a, it's kind of a character. Oh, a character. No. But I think... Uh, <laughs> I think... That how could you have... A, how could we not... I mean, you know, how could we not authorize our agents to go in and kidnap people? Like, for example, if, you, if there is somebody in a country that's very dangerous and threatening to the United States, no. and, you know, if we can't send in, true, you know, a, a small, like, hit squad or something to go in and get this guy, what are we supposed to do? Send our entire military? in there right. and take over the whole country? That's not gonna happen. Yeah. So... That was damn good. I don't know why they have legislation and then about, oh, can we bring it back or not? All we want is the head, you know? Right. Fits in the overhead bin. There's not a lot of cost for flights back. St. Patrick's. <laughs> Let's talk about this uh, drug testing at the Catholic School. St. Patrick's High School in, in Chicago will be the first school in the country to test all of its students for drug use. And it's still illegal to test them in public school. Yeah, they better hope it doesn't go to public school. That's all the New York high school students need is another test they can't pass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you oh, did yeah. Oh, no, you <laughs> didn't. <laughs> Expect everyone's a graduate. I, I, well, I went to Catholic school. I, you went to Catholic I, school, no, I, I went to a Catholic school. So Any stories you'd like to tell us? Well, no, I mean, I understand why, because we were always taught that drugs dull the sensation of getting plowed by your teacher. So it's not, it's a, a bad, sorry. It's, it's, well, well, it was eventually going to happen. But you know, what's why is it wrong? Why is it wrong? You're in high school. You're like in prison. That's what a high school is, basically. You yeah. Know? You get crappy food, you walk around the yard once a day, the blacks control the weight room. <laughs> what can you do, man? <laughs> You're oh. stuck there. But is, is, it, is it all an idea so priests can go in the bathroom with teenage boys again? Is that what it is? And no, because samples? they're not using urine, urine They're coming out they, semen they, samples, they probably, using, right? No, they're using hair they, samples. Yeah, they're using, oh. they're using so hair samples. All they have to do is shake their pillowcase. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're using... They're, that's Ooh. what they're doing. They're, they're oh, clipping, they're clipping a little piece of each guy's hair. It's like, you know, obviously, some of these, one of these priests is trying to release his inner hairdresser. Right. Yeah, oh. He'll be out yeah, of... where he gets the hair. Well, Greg, you're... 
Wait a minute, minute. <laughs> Greg, as a top uh, graduate of the top Regis High School, which impresses, you know, like five Irish people. Um, <laughs> Tell us about the priests. A lot of them are not, even though there are a lot of priests we all know that are, <laughs> but there's also a lot that aren't, aren't there? Aren't what? Uh, Greg? What? You know what? I'll tell you this. And I, I guess, uh, Ooh, I, I really guess there's, the you know, I guess there, I guess there are uh, legal issues uh, on the line here, but the, I, I just very recently found out that a, a priest that was there when I was there, who was the coolest guy that we all loved, that we thought he was the greatest guy, we all thought he's going to leave the priesthood because he's way too normal and very laid back. We just found out 20 years later that he's now being uh, charged and uh, investigated with all sorts of molestation back then. And the worst part about it was it wasn't me, that he was molested. Right. I always thought, yeah. we, had, I'm I thought we had a little chemistry All going. jokes aside, it's... No, but that's a true, that's a true say story. That's a true story. I believe wow. it's a true story, but every, I'm just saying I, it seems like every, you know. But look. wait a minute. In fairness to a priest, yeah. if the guy's gay, first of all, in the church, they became priests because the family's like, you're not gay, you're a priest. And they're like, oh, okay, and then they become a priest. Yeah. But <laughs> second of all, if you, do you actually find it abnormal? Would you call it child molestation? A bunch of smooth boys from Regis, they're a little nerdy, but they're starting to feel their oats, walking around <laughs> the halls, and the guy, just because he's gay, he goes after them. That's not a kid, it's a young boy, it's a man. Right. Well, a 13 year old, year old 13. boy. 13. Yeah, that's what you are when you're a freshman in high school, 13. Yeah, that's a vulnerable. Point. Maybe your father, you know, is Latin American 14, and maybe a little too strict, so you're looking for a, oh. another, sure. you know, kind of father figure in your life. And yeah, it fills the hole. <laughs> it fills the hole yeah. inside. Yeah. Yes. I did not mean void. 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 <laughs> inside. That's yeah, no, I know what you mean. Hold yeah. on, the Italian wants to say but something. Why are they, it says they can, right now they can only test uh, student athletes and, and kids in extracurricular activities. Why are they that's testing That's public those? schools. It's like, is that the, the quarterback and the editor of the yearbook? Are they the ones getting high at the mall in front of one potato, too? On one <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain something I never liked about Italians or Spanish. You guys ignored the church. Uh, we were, only the Irish were scared to have sex and the rest of it. You guys were like on car fronts, like making out at 12. <laughs> and we sat there waiting. Oh, no, the God will kill us. Why yeah, were you guys affected by the priest the way we were? Irish chicks ended up with blue balls. So oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, good you know, point, uh, girls. You son of a bitch. They've had it with you. No. Do you know what's All right, look. Thank God we finally got to this next subject. Oh. <laughs> See, I was waiting for minutes, and I was like, maybe there was no third subject. Um, Chrysler is sponsoring a pay-per-view event during halftime of the Super Bowl yeah. where models dressed in lingerie will play seven-on-seven -seven tackle football. Is this, uh, is this exploitation or entertainment, Gray? Well, you know, it's, bo it's both. But you know who the head coach is? Who? Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> Let's get a black crack at it and a bunch of women in lingerie. Why don't we get Mike Tyson as the offensive coordinator? We can start pressing charges right now. But, you know, <laughs> the well, they, they said that it's, they said, people are saying it's offensive. It was Chrysler sponsoring this as an advertising gimmick, and it's, they're saying it's offensive. How can it be offensive? I mean, have you, have you seen any of the other Chrysler ads? You know, they, they could spray these girls with napalm, and it wouldn't be nearly as offensive as cramming Celine Dion down our throats right. every three minutes. Well, <laughs> and also, do you know who the other coach is? Eric Dickerson. So the National Lingerie League has 100% oh. Minority head coaches, which is a lot better than the NFL. <laughs> so you will not find Jesse Jackson. Come on, you're in league. But I don't you won't find Jesse Jackson protesting it this game. It costs 20 bucks to look at this. That's right. And you have to wait till the Colts finish scoring before you can see. Porn is like 8.95, and it's a three-hour block. There's no pressure of, oh, I've only got 20 minutes. I gotta hurry. And then they cut to LT's face, and it's like, ugh. And, and then you gotta start over. Let me tell you this much. The show's getting too lowbrow and too sexual. We're going to commercial. Why don't you guys play with the pig sting on the break? No. Hey, you got mad beef with tough crowd, stupid? Don't sit there and stew. Call us up so we can record you and use it on the show. <laughs> Miss, thanks for bringing up my kiss during the break. It really makes me feel uh, great to bring up those awful memories of Alley Cat and Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh, anyway, uh, we like to keep up with the kids like every show. The kids, the kids, what are the kids up to? What are the kids into? So uh, we talked to the 20-year-olds at our office, and one kid, this is true, tells us that him and his friends were saying, like, what do you guys, because well, this weekend we were talking about how some of them like sex with digital rectal stimulation. Now, I know you're sitting at home right now going, what did he say? What did he say? Hopefully you're not using the finger, you know. I said... The latest trend is finger butt enhancement during sex. <laughs> and so I will ask the panel, is there any man here who has had a lead press on in his prostate? Oh, Let's start with uh, T-Shawn, what do you think? Oh, well, it, is my <laughs> it doesn't make you gay unless it's a man's finger. 
Mm. Hmm. Yes. But no, I mean, it's like, it's crazy. No, I don't think, I mean, it's like, or if it's a woman's finger and you're thinking about a man. That's yeah. bad, too. If it's a woman's thumb, that makes yeah. it gay also. Or if she goes but to the second minute. knuckle. Yes. But what I'm saying is this. What about if it's a dog's paw? Do you feel that, uh, what if it's a highlight? If she pulls well, listen, out a condom, it you, gay. Do you feel, <laughs> let's forget the, uh, detail, the particulars of it. Do you feel that this is, like, indicative of something bigger, like? Yes. Go ahead, fella. Well, once again, it's questioning male heterosexual. That's they they keep going to tell us that we're gay. This it's just the whole the whole gay movement's taken over. And you think that uh... it is? You get an all gay high school. Every show is gay now. You need a condom to change a goddamn channel. <laughs> I was like, this is gonna happen. Not to be hacky, but this is another true story. I recently had my first uh, prostate exam, and, oh, and, the, and the doctor literally says, uh, "Why is that hacky? I've been doing that for ten years in my act." Yeah. <laughs> well, he says, uh, <laughs> "No, he says, uh, he says, uh, you, neither one of us is going to enjoy this." Right? He literally says that as he's like greasing yeah. me. I was like, "Neither one of us is going to enjoy this very much." So, like, to, to ease my discomfort with him, neither one of us is going to enjoy this very much. And I thought, like, why be such a pessimist? You know? Right. Maybe. <laughs> Give no, me a I chance. Am... You never know. I'm trying to keep an open mind. Lemons I had one. I had yeah. one. I swear to God. And I go, do you think I'm getting a physical? And I go, do you think, should I get a prostate exam? And he goes, well, if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want it. <laughs> don't make me ask for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. In that case, yeah. Then they, then they poke at like a homeless guy trying to get a quarter out of a pay farm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, I'm done with this subject. Still work. Average Joe, that was a beautiful, beautiful visual, almost poetic, really. But Average Joe wrapped up last night. Oh, who gives a shit? <laughs> oh, I know you love that. They just don't care. They don't care. Average Joe wrapped up last night. Oh. And Melina picks looks all for money. Take a look at this, please. It was a decision was so difficult. I don't want to hurt Adam, but Jason and I were so excited to be with each other, so it's very bittersweet for me. Look at that. Once again, proving my yeah. point. But the one guy, this guy's rich, and this guy's supposedly right. good-looking, but lives with his mother. Which so one's rich? Good. Rocky Balboa? Which one's rich? Yeah. Why don't you guys quit heckling those poor fellas? They're just trying to get a break. Right. And start telling me, what do you think about this? What, what does it mean? Is it like the finger up there? But it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything, because it's, it's, it was actually kind of a dilemma that they put her there, in there, because the one guy was rich. He was a nice, right. funny guy who was yeah. rich, and the other guy was just good-looking. So for, like, a blonde cheerleader type, that's like an impossible, it's a miracle her head didn't explode. You know what, guys? Even though I'm sorry I brought this up, this is the fruitiest conversation I've ever had. <laughs> it's making me say, sick to my stomach. My Shut up, stupid. Do you think I Pick every f***ing subject? <laughs> well, he's on the show. You should approve the right. subject. Oh, 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 man. Oh, oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Do we have any more subjects? They're going to cover this on the oh, man hush. show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the show that gets ratings. All right. Oh, God. Wow. Turning on your own show like that, Nick? <laughs> Do I what? How does that feel? Turning on your own show like that? How do you feel right now, you wow. bastard? I'm not trying. This isn't my show. I'm on once a week. I'm about as important as Rich Voss. Oh, my God. Oh, wait a minute. You leave that poor man's name out of this. It's like Goodfellas. Hasn't he suffered enough? You leave him out of this. All right, folks, look. People are starving all over the world without commercials. So we'll be right back.